Hi, my name is Roland and we are here in my uh, holiday resort in Thailand. But unfortunately, I will leave here in about two weeks and I will go to uh, Austria for a while. Before I go, I just want to go in two videos. One is uh, what we have done here in the power room of the off-grid solar system and the second video will then be uh, showing what we have done with the power wall and how that one worked out. Here in the power room we have basically done three things. I have my off-grid solar system here with the all-in-one uh, 4 kilowatt inverter and the 10 a kilowatt hours lipo battery. A few months ago there was a repair to do on the inverter. Two capacitors have been uh, replaced because the inverter output, AC output was low and that was fixed. The inverter is still producing perfectly the voltage which it should. On the other side uh, I have tested the LiPo pack after three years and because of that test I decided to build a DIY monitor just to keep it connected now to the Wi-Fi so I can monitor it from abroad and just to know much better uh, what is going on with the pack. We will talk about this in a bit. And the third thing I want to show is uh, because uh, there were several videos I have made about earthing and bonding of this sort of off-grid inverters or off-grid inverters in general and there is always a lot of questions coming up. The third uh, thing I want to demonstrate is how much current does actually go over a bonding wire. So if you're interested in these things please uh, bear with me and we will just do this in a short video here. the data which the battery monitor gave me the last couple of months is actually very surprising. So when I installed this uh, monitor I uploaded 550 cycles but since then the battery monitor has now already added extra 100. So in average this has shown that every month the system, the off-grid system, is adding around 21, 22 cycles. And uh, what I have actually initially uh, estimated was uh, that the cycle count will be about one cycle per two days. So we have quite more cycles than I thought. Even now, uh, the last two months, three months, was uh, rainy season and the cycles are just adding. So after one year I will then correct for the cycle count of the last three years and I'm actually thinking to that the number will be increased by around 150 up to 200. But this is amazing. The pack has tested now to 8000 almost 100 watt hours on the last test uh, before it was 8400 so this drop of 300 watt hours is not because we added 100 extra cycles you have to understand that now during the rainy season the pack is almost never uh, fully charged at the end of the day cell voltage is actually never reaching uh, the voltage where the BMS would start to balance so during the rainy season it is uh, very likely that the cells are getting a little bit out of balance and the uh, capacity is uh, dropping a little bit and then when the weather is getting better again uh, then typically the pack will then uh, balance again and uh, probably we will then see uh, again higher numbers during the dry season. So overall 
The battery monitor works really nice. Never saw it resetting. So it's very stable. When there is a Wi-Fi disconnect, it doesn't matter at all. It's just uh, handling all these sorts of things. This works perfectly. Nothing to complain about. So now let's answer the question about uh, bonding. You know, we tested this once. If you use an off-grid inverter, which is an IT device, so it has an isolated earth, and you do not bond it, you will probably find yourself a hot neutral. So there will be a voltage on your neutral wire. And this is caused by the inverter not knowing where uh, it should basically put the sine wave in a two-dimensional room. So if, if it does not have a reference towards ground, the sine wave will always be perfect on, at the voltage which you set between the L and the N, but the N can end up uh, being hot. So let's open again the bonding wire. Please always, if you work on a powered uh, load center like I do now, know what you do and don't touch anything of this. Don't electrocute yourself. I'm working here on the neutral terminal. I'm not touching anything. So the bonding wire is now open again. And we are going to measure the voltage between neutral and a point of earth. So here I have the point of earth and here I have neutral. And as you can see now, at the moment I have like 12, 13, 15, 17 volts. So there is potential on the neutral. It's rising slightly. So now we are 20. This can vary from inverter to inverter and from time to time. So when we did that last time, we had almost 50 volts on the neutron. Now the question is, if you have a potential on the neutral and you connect it via a bonding wire to earth, there must be obviously a current flowing, right? So let's check this and we connect, reconnect the bonding wire. Okay. So the bonding wire is reconnected. Let's measure the voltage again. This should ob obviously be zero because we have a wire there, right? So now the question, let's measure AC amps, right? I have a clamp meter here set to AC. And what would this one show us? I hope you can see this 0, 0.00. So there is no current flowing. How is that possible? We had some power on that rail and now it's zero amps. That is, as I always try to say in my videos, the bonding wire is only there to provide the inverter a reference to ground. Once the reference is established, the inverter can perfectly put out its sine wave with reference to ground. And there can never be current flowing there because everything is just uh, adjusted with the reference to ground. If you measure your connection to your grounding rod, the wire there, and you can see current flowing. What does that mean? So let's go outside uh, to my grounding rod and let's go and measure connecting wires there. Here in this trench underneath this cover, there's my grounding rod and all the grounding 
of this building, which is a TNC system. So the the main grounding is actually coming from the PEN conductor from the transformer. But here I have an additional grounding rod as an alternative grounding point, right? And here I have uh, these two wires and a cat, which is uh, very curious, which are going to that grounding rod. And what we are going to do is we are going to check if there is some current flowing there. Okay, AC clamp meter is on amps. And the second curious cat, let's check this. And yeah, the meter also here showing 0, 0.00 amps. When you have an inverter installed, as an addition to your electrical system, even there is connections between neutral and ground, there is bondings. There should never be current flowing to your grounding rod. Because if it does, that only means that the primary path for the electricity from your power source to your appliance and back, that there is some sort of uh, disturbance there, which should not be. So always when you do an installation, check your earthing wire if you have some current flowing there. If you have, then there is certainly some mistake in your system somewhere. Okay, so this was uh, the power room. Everything is working fine. Of course, always have my app. Now I can look if uh, the battery is working. But of course, uh, I'm not expecting anything will happen. The, this battery system, the off-grid system is basically running day and night and it only had a downtime once when there was a lightning strike. And since then in four years, this never stopped to work. And it should continue like this. So thank you for watching this video. In the next video, we will uh, talk about the power wall. I will show you what happened there, how much it produced. Please uh, comment, like the video, subscribe to the channel and I see you next time.